Judging by the photos that I've seen online, in this box is what promises to be the most impressive Chinese direct drive extruder mechanism. So I am super excited about this one, you guys. If it all goes to plan, this will become my go-to extruder for future printers that will be enclosed. So I will have a heated chamber around the printer and I need an all metal CNC extruder for that task. So let's get this thing out of the box and run it through its paces and dive into the design to see if it's up to the task. All right, when it's all said and done and everything's been removed from the packaging here, this is what we're left with that actually matters. So this has got to be the sexiest CNC machined extruder coming out of China these days. Really does look quite nice. And the first thing that I noticed is this lever right here, which is your easy filament loading lever. So you basically flip that up and there's a little bit of resistance. So there's, that's fully loaded and that's gonna be pinching the filament in there. And then when you flip it all the way up like that, it sort of puts a lot of pressure on the spring. Here, watch, watch the spring there. See how the spring position is there? And then when I do that, it pops it out a little bit. So that makes it a lot easier to load the filament. Although um, completely not necessary, all you need to do if you really have a problem loading filament is to remove that like so. But yeah, it's, it's a nice thing to have. It certainly makes it seem like they've um, gone to great effort to make this a very user-friendly thing. And those clicking noises are very satisfying, I must say. And it's worth bringing that up because if you guys remember here on the Orbiter extruder that I reviewed, you know, several months ago, the uh, filament loading path is quite challenging there. And I needed to open it all the way up like so in order to get the filament um, easily in there. And to get a look at just how that mechanism functions, let's unscrew this one more time and flop the door down. And you see that little pin right there? So watch the pin as I pull the lever the pin gets pushed out. So the pin is pushing on the, what is it, the breech door here. And inside there we see the typical uh, Bontech knockoff uh, dual, dual drive extruder gears. Uh, Bontech was the first person to come up with this form factor. Dual driven gears have been in existence for quite a few years, going back to welding even. Um, we figured that out. Michael Hathaway was nice enough to provide the um, the pictures for that that shows that this has been a technique from you know feeding filament feeding wire it's been a technique that's used for years and years but these gears that look like this are straight up copies of bond deck there's other ways to implement this uh, maybe this is the best way but you know it's a knockoff let's just call a spade a spade and the most disappointing thing about this entire extruder that i'm seeing is that plastic gear so disappointing you guys this whole thing is metal so you can put it in a heated chamber and not worry about things going south. You know, metal doesn't warp and deform in sort of a medium heat environment. You have to get it really, really hot until it starts to have, you know, problems with that. And to see a plastic gear in an otherwise all metal extruder uh, is really disappointing. And speaking of that gear, the ratio, the gear ratio on this extruder is five to one, which puts it in the same class as the Sherpa Mini here, which was the last one that I reviewed. So it's basically the same gear. So the core of this extruder is the same as the core of that extruder from the stepper motor to the gears, it's all the same. So the only thing that's different is the shell. But of course, uh, you can change it up quite a bit depending on what actual hot block and cooling apparatus like the uh, the radiator itself, the heat sink, depending on what you're gonna mount to the extruder. But the NF Sunrise here comes with a dedicated solution in the box. And that's in stark contract to the Sherpa Mini, which expects you to figure out how to, uh, how to mount something to it. And the whole filament melting hot end portion of this direct drive extruder is, um, well, at least partially, uh, another knockoff. This, very much derivative of the copperhead heat break and um, throat assembly from Slice Engineering. But this is gonna be very much inferior to the part that Slice Engineering has to offer. The reason being that this copper jacket here is um, only gonna give you the good, you know, really good performance on the cold end. So the heat sink portion, which is this whole block here, is gonna strip away heat from that pretty nicely 
and that means we shouldn't get too much heat creep except that um, the stainless steel is, um, well the stainless steel does not conduct heat well, copper really does. So um, basically we're going to have a big cold moment. Every, every bit of this stainless steel is going to be a lot colder than the aluminum here and the aluminum here and the copper here. So that means that right there in the melt chamber, this should be a part of the melt chamber. You want this to be copper to really get hot and then you want the, the um, stainless steel to just be that thin portion right in the gap there, right inside, you know, in, in, the, skinny, in the skinny portion. That's why it's so skinny, because you're trying not to transfer heat from the hot end to the cold end. It's supposed to be a heat break. And to make this all one piece of stainless steel, really a uh, massive loss compared to the actual copperhead official part from Slice Engineering. So if you are going to run this um, extruder, the easiest thing you can do to upgrade it, get a genuine copperhead from Slice Engineering. Huh, <laughs> look at that. The final hole for the fan is not actually drilled and tapped. You'll see the place where I was trying to put the, uh, the fourth screw for the fan into the, uh, the non-existent hole right there. Maybe because it would interfere with the breech loading mechanism? Let's take a look at that. No, there's plenty of meat in there. I don't know why they didn't drill and tap that. Was that just a mistake? A, a tooling operation that they neglected to save a little time? So that's what the final assembly looks like, and let's throw it on the scale here and see how much it weighs. We got 218 grams. That is kind of chunky. The BQH2 extruder here, 225. Just slightly heavier, and I'm going to tell you what, I can already predict that this is going to be the superior um, direct drive hot end because... It's got an all-metal construction, and I don't mean that like an all-metal hot end, which is old nomenclature, talking about the filament path being made out of 100% metal. I mean that every component in this direct drive extruder is made out of metal, including the gears here. This is a metal gear, which uh, is a lot better than this plastic gear. Speaking of which, when you want to manually feed filament through here, you don't have to just pull the lever and push by hand. You can reach over to the thing and just spin the gear with your thumb. It's like a little thumb wheel. They've um, kind of extended the side of the gearing out the side of the direct drive extruder, and that gives you that ability, which is phenomenal. Really, really nice capability with the BQH2 extruder here, and it's absent on the, the NF Sunrise here. You can't, I mean, maybe. By the time it's all mounted up, I don't think you're gonna be able to get your hand in there to feed through in that direction. But you can easily flip this up like so and then push in easily. You don't have to hold it with two hands. So yeah, it is still a one-handed manual operation. That lever, that, that, that is some nice functionality. It is, it's pretty nice. In comparison, the Sherpa Mini here only weighs like 160 grams. I'm holding up the wiring here because uh, this extruder doesn't have that big bundle of wires. So yeah, 165 grams. Wow, that's 40, 50, 60 grams lighter. That's uh, that's going to be about 25% lighter, and that that makes a big difference on the on the speed of your printing. And you guys, that's using this very hefty copper block, the the uh, the copper block on the Slice Engineering Mosquito hot end. This has got to be the highest performing hot end on the market. So I've got the the best hot end on the market and the lightest weight extruder directly mounted to it, and that's going to be just. A winning combination here. I, I don't see, I'm not, we'll test it, but I just don't see that the NF Sunrise here can even compete with this aluminum hot end and all this heaviness up here that we just don't need to be dealing with. All right, see the uh, the mark there that's just shy of the tube? That was at 278 millimeters per minute, so let's see if it does 275 millimeters per minute and completely gets the tube right here right up against the black line. Giving it a little help here just by making sure there's no backup at the front end. Perfect. Yep, see the black mark? Lines right up with the tube. So 275 millimeters per minute is the speed limit. All right, I've got my little multimeter here with this K-type thermistor uh, on the end of it. And this thing is really not very well cal calibrated. So this hot end right here is supposed to be at 220 degrees. Sticking this thermistor in right there at the top, we can read It'll get up to like 190 is the highest value that I've seen. So it's not very well calibrated, but keeping that in mind, let's see how bad the heat creep is on this hot end. There's the fan blowing out of those slots right there. So I don't want to put this in the slipstream of the fan in, in, with all the blasting air. What I want to do is right on the other, on the backside. So 
we'll stick it right up against the metal on the back side there and that reads only 24 degrees. Just a little more than room temperature. By touch it doesn't feel any warmer than anything else. So I would say that this is doing a good job as a heat sink, stripping the heat away. We're probably not getting very much heat creep up into the throat. Well, I'm really glad that I took this thing apart because this is just pure CNC pornography, you guys here. This is gorgeous. You see this ball bearing that's got a spring behind it? That's been pressed into the hole there. Just awesome. What that does is it captures the, um, the arm here. This is the pivot arm that locks the, the filament in place. So as you swing this down, it rides, it pushes that ball out of the way and it catches into the hole here. So that's the little detent and clicks right in. Very nice, very nice. Another attention to detail on this arm is this insert here, which is made out of brass or bronze. It might even be oil impregnated. So the aluminum here would gall and you don't want aluminum riding on um, threads of a screw, especially. And yeah, you just don't want aluminum to be a bearing surface, but bronze or oil impregnated bronze is very awesome. So, so much attention to detail on this little part right here. And this is the core of the functionality of this whole extruder and they've done a really good job. I really like it. Up here at the top, this is the um, Bowden tube catch or the little fitting that captures the Bowden tube. And that slides in there and then there's a set screw here that captures this. Now I've seen in the past these CNC, you know, extruder things or, or hot ends and they press this part. See, there's two little ridges here. And so they just press this part down into the aluminum. And once it's in there, it never comes back out. Well, what happens when this thing fails on you? And in this case, if this ever fails, you can actually remove it. So just lots of attention to detail. Um, they just, they really get my, my, my thumbs up for what they've done. If only, if only the stupid gear was made out of metal. This is the Achilles heel, you guys. The, the whole point of having an all metal assembly is to put this thing in a heated chamber and I just, I can't abide by having a, a plastic gear. It might as well, the whole thing might as well be made out of plastic. And so why am I paying the weight penalty to have all this gorgeous CNC aluminum when this is plastic? Of course, this actual hot block, hot end assembly here is also inferior to the slice engineering copper head. So you can get a hot copper head hot end or a hot block as well as the heat break throat um, piece. And that's gonna perform substantially better, might even up your maximum extrusion to 300. Here's a problem, the filament breech door here, I don't know what else to call this part, that um, you know it holds the second driven side of the, um, the dual hob gear apparatus it holds it holds it there and in, in tension with the spring there this is the door that the lever arm here on top activates so the pivot for this door is this pin right here and keep in mind this is the fully assembled unit just like you would bolt it onto your 3d printer and look at that pin can just come right out so you can see the way that i've got it here pushed out to that point and uh, look at all that play in the in the door that's going to affect your um the, the amount of force that the filament is pinching, is being pinched with, uh, and of course the pin can come all the way out here. So yeah, I can see a case where, you know, lots of cycles of just constantly moving around just like this and, oh, that pin just falls out. I can see that happening if you're printing for days on end or something like that and you're, you're not regularly checking up on the, uh, on, on the extruder. But I do have to say that the front here, as I've just shown it falling out, it's falling out to the front here, is going to have the fan. So if I do try to push this pin through uh, from the back side, I think, yeah, it does catch the just the very edge of the plastic there. You can see down inside. So it's not quite able to be punched through into the fan blades from this side, which is nice, but there's nothing to say that it can't work its way loose at the back there and still do that same sort of a wobbling moment. Although, because there's such a cantilevered thickness here, it doesn't seem to wobble when it's pulled out to that level. However, it can come, still come all the way out and that's, that's gonna be catastrophic if that happens to you. And I don't see any reason why this couldn't be captive inside there. They could have left just a little bit of meat right here and a little bit of meat in the back here. And then as the two halves of the extruder came together, this would be a captive part. So that gets a reasonable demerit. <laughs> Other than that, the, the, the machining and the overall 
attention to detail in the design are really nice, even if I disagree with the overall design. I don't think that there's a need for this. Satisfying as it is, and it is really, it feels super nice, you guys. It's, it's really nice, but uh, it just adds weight. You really don't need it. It's redundant. Keep it simple, stupid. You want to just um, have fewer components, and like all the other um, extruders on the market that do just fine with only having this breech door, uh, this secondary mechanism is superfluous. All right, let's wrap up this discussion with a nice little bow. This thing prints at 275 millimeters per minute. That's the extrusion speed. When you do the math that I'll flash on screen also down there in the comments or description or whatever, uh, that comes out to 137 millimeters per second travel speed in the X and Y direction if you're printing at a typical 0.2 millimeter layer height. So that's, um, I mean, faster than most of us print at most of the time. So this is perfectly adequate for the job that most of us do. But um, yeah, I don't know, could be a lot better with the, what was it, the Sherpa Mini here, um, and the Mosquito Hot End by Slice Engineering, I got 175 or 172 millimeters per second in the travel speed. So that is significantly faster, significantly lighter weight, and it has the same gearing mechanism, same plastic gear. So in other words, there's no advantage to this over this as far as performance goes. It's heavier and it prints slower. The job that this thing was supposed to do, the idea that I had for this, is still best uh, done by the BQH2 extruder. This thing having an all metal construction throughout. Not all metal hot end, just all metal construction. You can put an all metal hot end, that's what I've done on my enclosed chamber printer. I've actually put the, uh, what is it, the uh, Slice Engineering Copperhead I've put that onto one of these. So I need to run the uh, the speed test with the copperhead because that's gonna get better performance than this aluminum block here on the BQH2. So yeah, the, uh, the BQH2, the winner for enclosed printers, and the Sherpa Mini here is the winner for non-enclosed printers. Well, the Sherpa Mini with the uh, Slice Engineering Mosquito Hot End. So yeah, those are my choices. This one, I see no reason for anybody to get it unless you just really love that very sexy and very like highly functional filament loading lever arm. That thing is quite nice, but uh, it's just not worth it. It's it's an extraneous thing that you just don't need. It, it's extra. <laughs> just it, keep it simple, stupid, right? Less is more. The best part is no part. You want to boil down your designs and get them to be more simplified. That's ideal. So to add this extra bit of functionality when you can perfectly achieve the same results using just the breech door, uh, it just doesn't make any sense. So I'm not recommending this. Functional as it is, beautiful as it is, it's, um, it, it fails. So yeah, uh, if I'm drawing conclusions, I would say that this is sort of typical of China. Now, clearly this is a Chinese company that's really putting in the effort and I commend them on that effort. Thank you for trying, but you've got the same old problems here where there's little details that make a big difference. And despite nailing most of it, the, uh, you know, like the, the pin that can come through and this added thing, it just, it all, it all comes down to it just, it isn't worth it and it doesn't work. So stick with the Sherpa Mini uh, or the BQH2 extruder and that'll do it for this video. Thank you so much to my Patreon supporters. You guys keep the channel going. See you in the next one. Have a good day, bye.